So moving on to the uh, next slide. I'm on slide number 10 now. So, so this is the zoomed in image. This, this slide previously has shown the complete MQ clients portfolio, but the current slide shows you shows you uh, you know the zoomed in image of the MQ.NET stack. So uh, we'll go from bottom up. So we have uh, MQ Queue Manager, which is the MQ server, and then uh, we have MQ.NET interface, which is the OO classes on MQI, uh, which are you know uh, written in C sharp. And then on top of this MQ.NET interface, we have XMS.NET, uh, which is uh, which is based on JMS specification. You now on top of XMS is what the MQ's custom channel for WCF. So this is how uh, all these clients are layered uh, in MQ.NET stack. As discussed in the previous slide, we have uh, uh, two types of uh, connection modes. One is local bindings, where the client and the server exist on the same computer, and the share, you know uh, communication happens via interprocess communications. And then we have client connections where a, a communication channel be, will be established with the queue manager uh, for sending and receiving messages. Now we have two kinds of uh, connections here. Uh, one is unmanaged connections where uh, the .NET classes delegates calls to C client, and we have uh, another uh, uh, mode of connection which is managed client where the entire MQI is implemented in uh, messaging client is implemented using C sharp and uh, which executes completely under the control of or under the scope of uh, CLR. So which gives you all the advantages, uh, allows you to fully leverage the advantages that uh, CLR provides such as security, um, exception handling, memory management, and so on and so forth. So this is the uh, zoomed in image of the MQ.NET stack. Now each of these client or each of these layer has got their own importance which probably we'll you know, uh, discuss in the slides to come. I'm going on to the next slide. Uh, I'm on slide number 11. So we will go on layer by layer and see how each of this uh, help the business. So to start with MQ.NET classes, which are based on MQ.NET or MQI, MQ interface. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, they are the standard MQ interfaces made available from OO classes and popularly known as base.NET classes. The purpose of this interface or these classes is to provide straightforward and sophisticated messaging uh, for the applications. And this is the messaging uh, API implemented in C Sharp. So it's a very quick uh, 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 messaging API. So how to send and receive a message to the MQ? It's very quick. Uh, just create uh, a Q Manager class instance, which is MQ Q Manager class instance, which actually establishes a connection to the MQ Q Manager uh, for accessing the resources, which are the messaging queues or the topics under the Q Manager. Now create an another instance of MQ Q or MQ topic, which actually accesses the the uh, the messaging queue or a, uh, or the topic destination under the uh, Q Manager and then create an instance of message which can carry some uh, the data or the relevant information that you want to send across or uh, you know send it to the messaging queue for the uh, receiver applications. So just instantiate these three objects uh, send is to send the message and then receive is to re get the uh, message from the messaging queue. Uh, so typically how a message will look like so uh, uh, I've got a quick rectangular boxes there so uh, this is how the message will look like we have an MQMD, which is a message descriptor header, uh, which is uh, and then an RFH2, which is which is to allow some of the user-defined properties to be carried on as a uh, you know a header message header, and then payload where the the actual data or the information uh, for the uh, exchange between the applications can be added. So this is how a message object will look like. So moving on to the uh, next slide. I'm on slide number 12 now. So uh, this, this is just uh, put some of the features that base.NET classes provide. So it supports both point-to-point -point and publish subscribe uh, programming models, and it can access queue managers on multi-platform, which which can which is Windows and uh, as well as non-Windows platforms, including ZOS and System I. Uh, it supports distributed transactions client automatic reconnection where in case of uh, a failure the client automatically reconnects to the queue manager and it also supports multi version mq accessibility uh, socket sharing where uh, one socket can be shared by multiple connections um, and it is uh, completely interoperable with xms jms and other wmq applications and supports uh, channel definition tables for 
you know, uh, reuse of the resources or accessing resources at runtime. So moving on to the next slide, I'm on slide number 13. So continuous based on classes. So simply, so these are the simple and straightforward uh, APIs for publish, subscribe, or uh, put or get messages. So so whenever you want, you want to be entirely on the .NET world and leverage the .NET capabilities entirely, uh, and yet have a simple and straightforward way to mess, way to send and receive messages. These are the APIs to go, and then uh, uh, whenever you want to access, uh, you know, low-level message structures and add extra headers to the messages. Again, these are the uh, uh, messaging. This is the messaging APIs to go, and uh, using base .NET classes, you can or MQ .NET classes, you can actually inquire or set some of the MQ resource attributes. For example, queues, the maximum depth of uh, messages a queue can hold, and some of the other configurable properties that can be set programmatically using these uh, MQ .NET classes. And this, uh, this is the core .NET developer friendly API. So as discussed, so uh, you know, developers don't need to know anything about JMS specification. We have XMS, which is based on JMS specification, but this API is purely on on the um, you know, for the .NET world, which who doesn't want to use anything specific to Java or JMS MQ JMS coin. Uh, so these are the some of the cases to uh, to use uh, base .NET classes or the uh, MQ .NET classes. So moving on to the uh, next slide, I'm on slide number 14 now. Um, uh, so we will uh, we will now look into the XMS .NET, which is popularly known as, or officially known as IBM Message Service Client for .NET. Now, this is created by IBM based on JMS 1.1 specification, and it's a messaging-oriented middleware API in C Sharp for messaging. And again, this the purpose is to provide straightforward and sophisticated messaging. Uh, this is available with MQ version 701, uh, and uh, it's fully integrated component with uh, MQ. Uh, so the XMS objects or uh, XMS application is is a system comprised of XMS clients and at least one XMS or JMS provider, uh, and and the XMS or JMS provider is the is the message oriented middleware uh, that provides the facility to access and then send and receive the messages. A producer and a consumer, so who can send and receive the messages. Moving on to the uh, next slide. So XMS features, so it supports all the features that base.NET classes supports, which we have discussed on slide number 12, so the, one of the previous slides. Uh, on top of it, it also has got some of the other features, like uh, it's a cross-language programming API, where it's a set of high-level classes uh, which are defined uh, from the uh, unified domain on JMS 1.1 specification, and these are the same set of APIs available from C, C++, and .NET client and these are the same set of APIs using which you can access either MQ or application, WebSphere application server or WebSphere message broker with uh, a very minimal or no application changes at all. And it supports five message types to name bytes message, stream message, map message, object message, and text message, each of it carrying its own uh, you know, appropriate reason to use for. And then it supports decoupled administration where you know, uh, applications are loosely coupled to the resources by looking up, uh, by you know, by looking them up at runtime on a Java naming directory service. Uh, this is exactly how it works in JMS as well. And uh, and the objects or the resources that are created on the Java naming directory are completely reusable uh, for XMS objects. Uh, I mean to say, uh, the resources that are created for JMS on LDAP or file system context, or uh, you know, on a WebSphere application server JNDI. Uh, they can be reused or they can also be used by the XMS applications. Uh, and it's interoperable with JMS and other MQ clients. So moving on to the uh, next slide, uh, XMS when to use. So uh, whenever you want to f leverage uh, JMS specification or JMS messaging middleware API from non-Java applications, so you want to have a JMS kind of programming, but from non-Java application or non-Java world, uh, then XMS is to go. And uh, easily migrate between the messaging servers and the transports. So as discussed, the single API from XMS you can use you can use to talk to application, WebSphere application server or message broker or uh, uh, message queues. 
So it's the same API, same application, but with minimal changes in case you are connecting to the resources or the you know servers programmatically, uh, with no change at all in case you are using uh, JNDI. Provides higher abstraction in programming model, and uh, uh, you know XMS is to go whenever you want to reuse existing JMS skills. So these are some of the cases where you want to use uh, IBM Message Service Client for .NETs. So at this point, uh, I, j I will just give a quick pause and summarize between uh, base .NET classes and XMS XMS.NET. So base .NET classes are for one particular use where you want to, you know, um, have a very quick API which is uh, purely .NET friendly and allows you or gives you a .NET friendly environment to access the queue manager or enables developers access to the MQ queue managers. Uh, on the other side, XMS is again on .NET platform but helps you or enables you to reuse your existing Java or JMS skills uh, connecting to the MQ queue managers. So this is the clear uh, you know, uh, differentiation between these two APIs available from MQ. And uh, before we, uh, and one one another point is, so this these are the this is the messaging API available, and this can completely integrate into your existing .NET application, uh, wherein which uh, you know uh, both XMS and base .NET classes supports distributed transactions, and the MQ, uh, the MQ, the process that involves MQ operations can can gel up with the other operations uh, related to the other resource managers, for example, like uh, SQL servers. Uh, database. So you want to do some database update. At the same time, you want to do some MQ operations as well. So you can club both together in a single application and have them run under a single transaction scope. Also, you can enable the automatic reconnection where, you know, uh, in, in event of failure, the clients can automatically reconnect to the queue manager. Not just this, but you can have, you can also have your uh, integration capabilities with uh, other Microsoft uh, you know, um, products such as Dynamics AX and Dynamics CRM, uh, where uh, in a single application you can do the messaging operations as well as you can do the database or CRM or the other operations you would want to do with uh, the .NET client or the .NET on the .NET platform. So this is how the MQ .NET clients helps you to build applications that not just do the messaging operations but can also become part of your existing applications, uh, which involves uh, accessing a lot of other, uh, you know, um, Microsoft services. So moving on to the uh, next slide. So uh, I'm on slide number 17, which is uh, MQ's custom channel for Windows Communication Foundation. So Windows Communication Foundation provides a service-oriented architecture on Windows platform, uh, which is which is to provide broad interoperability, uh, reliability, security, and transactions. Uh, and yet allow you to build uh, uh, SOA kind of applications. Uh, and the work IBM is doing uh, on using MQ with Windows Communication Foundation is an example on how SOAP or JMS can be used outside Java. So uh, the MQ's custom channel for WCF layered on top of XMS, which provides, you know, JMS kind of, of um, messaging facility. So, which helps you to build a SOAP over JMS request response over the uh, WCF transports. So, moving on to the uh, next slide, I'm on slide number 18. So, which is uh, WCF uh, MQS custom channel architecture. So, if you look at uh, the architectural diagram, so MQ exists as a transport within the WCF architecture. So, where in which the WCF client can create a you know, uh, a request in the form of uh, SOAP over JMS by accessing the MQ resources, messaging queues or the topics, and then send uh, uh, the request onto a messaging infrastructure or, or, the, or to the queue manager. The WCF service on the other side running accesses the, uh, the messaging queue, you know, consumes the request, processes it, and then gives its response to the same queue from which the WCF client can pick up. So this is typically how uh, a WCF client and a service application run using the MQ um, as a transport service. And why MQ as a transport service? Because of its uh, quality of service, and uh, which includes reliability and uh, uh, and a lot of other features that MQ comes in with. 
and this is uh, currently available with MQ version 701 and fully integrated into it. So uh, that's on the uh, MQS custom channel architecture. So uh, just to quick summarize, so we have seen what is messaging and programming models, and then we've discussed about uh, MQ uh, .NET client, um, MQ .NET classes, and XMS .NET classes, and, and WCF. So this is how uh, the the clients we have different clients available from MQ for this catered use on the .NET platform. So one is to use a uh, a complete .NET friendly API which can be used purely within the .NET platform and one which which provides JMS kind of uh, JMS specification uh, API which enables you to uh, reuse existing messaging service skills and then WCF, uh, the custom channel on WCF which helps you to build service oriented uh, applications on Windows platforms uh, in our leveraging MQS quality of service at the same time also using WCF uh, uh, advantages. So that's about from me on the MQ's perspective. So at this point of time, I'll hand over the presentation to uh, Malena Gora, who will be running it through the message broker's perspective. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Karan. Um, can you give me the uh, presenter access? I hope uh, you all see my screen now. Uh, uh, thanks, Karan. Thanks, Mohini. Uh, so let's begin. So so far, we've seen the uh, the .NET capabilities uh, offered by Vesphere MQ. So now let us look into the .NET capabilities offered by Vesphere Message Broker, uh, which is a, a key product, a key middleware product from IBM. Uh, in the next few slides, we'll see a quick introduction about uh, Vesphere Message Broker and the new features available in their latest release, uh, then a detailed uh, .NET feature uh, provided in version H. Okay, so let's begin. So Vesphere Message Broker is an enterprise service bus offering from IBM. Its primary uh, purpose is to enable connection between different uh, environments which might use different network protocols, uh, have a different interface style, and which have a different format of data representation. Okay, uh, Vesphere Message Broker allows you to develop uh, integration applications in many ways using uh, the programming styles and different languages. Okay, we support uh, Java, we support ESQL, we support PHP. Uh, with version 8, we added .NET, which we'll see in detail in the coming slides. Okay, Vesphere Message Broker is available in mainly in three components. Uh, we call it Vesphere Message Broker Toolkit. It's used for application development. Okay, so developer can, can develop their message flows. Then there's the Message Broker Runtime. It's for running the application. Then there's a third component, third, third component called uh, Message Broker Explorer used for system in administration. Okay, uh, moving to next slide. So now let us see the, the key features available uh, in Message Broker version H. So basically we uh, 